Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go over how to write automation for sends, buses, and effects channels inside Studio One. In a previous video of mine, I went over the different types of automation modes that are available inside Studio One and pretty much any other DAW on the market anyway. Now we're going to take a look at how to actually alter and write automation for sends, buses, and effects channels. And there's a few different ways that you want to do it. And we'll also go over some settings in case you're not seeing the same things that I'm seeing. So let's dive into the DAW and take a look at how to modify automation. So here we are inside of our session. And what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on the sends for this lead vocal track right here. It's the one that I have highlighted in red. And I also have all of my effects channels over here available for you to view. Now, I generally like to use buses for my effects sends, and then I actually send all of these buses to a effects master bus as well. But let's not worry about how I do things. Let's worry about how to actually get the job done. Let's go back to our lead vocal here. So if you don't already see it and you don't know how to view your automation lanes, there's a few ways to do it. Up on the menu bar here, there is this button that says show automation. This shows the automation lanes. Now I have this track selected right now. So if I hit this one, it actually turns it on for all of the available channels. If I scroll up and down, you can see that pretty much all of them have it on. Even my folders, which are linked to buses, have it available. Now these channels just have the display set to off. So I can go in and change this to volume. You saw when I did this drop down, it already has volume, pan, and mute. And that's something you'll have to check your settings for. I'm going to go into my preferences. And then when you're in here, you go to advanced, automation, and then the default envelopes for new audio tracks. You can check or uncheck any of these. I like having them all available because it's less things that I have to add later if I need it. You'll also want this one, automatically create automation tracks for channels enabled if you want it to be able to automatically make those things. I have these on, so I'm just gonna hit okay. Now, like we said, we're looking at volume automation. And I'm gonna hit A again, and that turns everything off. Now I'm just looking at the waveform view. But something happened. If I scroll down to my effects, now all of these channels are not viewing the automation lanes. When you create a new bus, like I'm gonna do right now, it will automatically show the automation lane. Again, if you don't see this, you may want to check that this button is pressed and that'll turn it on for all the tracks. Now, maybe you don't need to see all of your automation lanes on all of your tracks all the time. If you hit A, it turns them all off and reverts you back to normal. But like we said before, these channels down here, the automation lanes are off and I like having them on. Let me get rid of this bus that I made. So the easy way to fix it is actually just to select the tracks that you want to view the automation lanes on. I'm gonna hold shift and I had clicked my effects bus and now I'm gonna go down to my print bus. And if I right click on here, in the menu is show hide automation. Now on all of these selected tracks that I had, it'll show the automation lanes. And when I get up into the audio tracks, it's not showing me the lanes because I didn't choose those ones. Okay, that's viewing automation. Now let's take a look at a couple different ways of writing and modifying the automation. Let's go back to our lead vocal channel and you can see I have a room send going on right here. If I wanna manipulate the send to the room, there's a couple ways I can do it. One way is I can go to the send level right here and you can see it highlights when I hover over it and I can right click. When I right click, I now have edit automation send level. Clicking this, now adds that automation lane to this track. And if I click the drop down, you can see this one now has four different lanes. Now it's just as easy as actually entering in points. Let's say for everything leading up to this line, I just want the room to actually be reduced. So I'm gonna select this region. And if I hover towards the top, I get this horizontal bar. This is the trim tool. I'm gonna to click and hold and drag it down because I want less room send during these lines. I'm also gonna hold shift so I can finally adjust my numbers instead of course. If I let go of shift, you can see the numbers kind of jump all around, but maybe I want an exact minus eight. When I did the trim tool, it added in the points where it's going from where it was to the new level. And then at the end is another point to go from the new level to the old level. 
Once I put this in as well, you saw that the track automatically jumped to read mode. And if we jump back here and watch this and hit play, you'll see it jump down at these first few lines and then back up when we get later on. Let's take a look. Just gonna fast forward a little. And let's solo it out so we can actually hear the reverb jump. Don't take this out on me. I don't deserve to die. No, this building crumbles and others build to rise. So that's one way of writing in automation. Another way is actually setting the channel itself to one of the different writing modes. Because I don't want to overwrite this section that we already put in, I'm going to put the write mode to touch. Now, whenever I make movements, those new movements will write the automation. And as soon as I stop doing things, it'll go back to where it was. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about and actually push the reverb on this section right here. I'm going to come back and just get ready. I'm going to hit play and then I'm gonna click and hold the room send here. When we get close, I'm gonna bump it up, and when I want to, I'm gonna pull it back down, and then I'm gonna let go. Here goes. Another's built to rise, and now that we're here, at this... So there you go, that's a combination of clicking and dragging and using touch. When I let go, you saw it snap right back to where the original send level was. It's not an instant snapback. There is some recovery time. And if we really zoom in on the automation, you can see that there is a slant getting us back to the original line. So we've changed the amount of reverb, but now let's do a couple different techniques and change the delay that's on the same vocal. Another way of adding the automation lane is to come back to the track that you want to modify. And let's modify something on the eighth note delay itself. If we go to the drop down, we get the option to add or remove parameters of automation. It'll pop up with this dialog box and we're going to scroll down to our eighth note delays that we have going on. Now what we can do is we can add pan by selecting it and just hitting add and you can see that it changed the default view over to pan. You can also remove parameters this way as well. But maybe we want to modify some things inside the plugin itself. And that was scrolling a little fast, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and actually alter the feedback on this track and the eighth note delays. Modifying the feedback will add more delays to this eighth note delay. So I found a little section and I'm going to just click on the line and enter in a couple spots. Now I have snap mode enabled and that's why it wasn't putting my dots exactly where I was clicking. I could easily just hit N, turn this off, and then add in the automation nodes wherever I need them to be. Now that we have our nodes in, it's easy enough just to select whichever ones you want and modify your automation from here. You can change where it happens within the time frame as well by going left and right. Now you may have noticed that on the line, or if you hover over any line, you'll get an extra node right in the middle. And what this actually allows you to do, if we zoom way in, and we'll make this track a bit taller just so we can see it easier. This center node actually allows us to click and hold and modify the arc of the change in the automation lane. So if we go all the way up, it actually is a much harder kind of change for the automation. And we can go the opposite way as well. And this allows us to change how it ramps in and out of these automation changes that we're doing. Okay, I changed sessions real quick to one that I actually used effects channels instead of buses. But I still have all of these effects channels going to a bus, which is this yellow one right here. But it doesn't matter. Everything we've already done also applies to the effects channels as well. You can see I have the effects channels up here, and I can view my volume automation. And this button right here allows you to turn the automation lanes on and off. So like we said, it works the same way. On any of these effects channels, I can go in and I can right click on anything I want and edit automation. Now, volume is already in 
for these effects channels, but maybe I want to modify the pan. Now you can see on my plate, I have a pan automation lane. I can add in my nodes and change anything I want and it will follow suit. I quickly jumped in to the analog delay to show you that you're not limited to stuff you can see on the mixer. You can go into plugins as well and add automation lanes. One thing to note, if you're gonna write automation for something within a plugin, you actually need the plugin itself to also be in a write or read automation mode. If you just draw something in, it will automatically read it, but if we're trying to go in and write automation for parameters within the plugin, you need to have it set for write. Using the write mode on the channel itself will not put the parameters onto the effect itself. The effect or plugin needs to be in automation, write or latch or touch. So now we're gonna turn off automatically and envelopes and watch what happens when we write. If I change the beats, we can see that it didn't create the lane because we've turned off the option to write the lanes for anything we've selected. Let's go back in, turn it back on. And now we'll hit play. You saw that it kicked in, created the lane and started recording the automation changes. Now we can go in cause we're done doing things within our plugin and put this back to read. Now, when we hit play, it'll read the automation that's on there as well. I hope this video shed some light on some practical ways of writing and modifying the automation on your sends from channels, the buses and effects channels that then receive that information of the automation. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.